Alright, let's get started. Supposedly, we are going to talk about shaft couplings, but I think we should do another sample problem regarding shaft design and specifically we'll be looking at a step shaft. Now, this type of shaft is, um, it has a, a multiple diameter along its length. What I mean is, for example, in this figure, we have section A to section B. So along that length, the diameter is, let's say, 1 inch. And at B to C, section B to C, so you would notice here that the diameter is larger than uh, than, th than this one. And let's say we have a 1.5 inches diameter or 2 inches diameter. So the reason for for designing this way or or designing this uh, configuration is just simply uh, because of efficiency and when we say efficiency we are talking about efficiency in terms of providing just the right amount of area for that given stress or for that given uh, amount of loadings at that point okay so uh, recall that typically we design or the most common um, common problems that we encountered regarding shaft design is to design a shaft with only one diameter right and uh, that uh, that can be done by just simply choosing the maximum moment or I mean the maximum torsional um, torsional stress or I think torsional loads along its um, along this shaft length right so just like just like you're designing the beam so sometimes we just uh, I mean typically we just we just design the beam with just one cross section um, and then we just design it based on the maximum moment so it's the same here in in designing the shaft so instead of choosing the, the maximum torque all throughout the length then we just um, we just want to provide just the right amount of area. Uh, I mean, because the maximum torque, maybe let's say it's just right here at point C. So maybe at this, at this section or section AB, we just need a value of torque of this much, right? So that's, that's the idea behind this step shaft. And of course, um, because of that configuration then of course there's going to be um factors for i mean factors in terms of of manufacturing um of course there's there's cost involved when doing this uh, step shop design okay so uh what we are going to do right now is to to do a sample design problem um from this textbook by Robert Mott and the title of the textbook is Machine Elements uh, Design All right so here's the author Robert Mott and and we will do this I mean we will do the, the method uh, based on our lecture handouts because um, the design example right here the solution is based on a different um, equation for the diameter so right here you would notice that this is the working equation that they used and it's slightly different because we didn't have this um, endurance limit uh, and also, I mean, we didn't use the insurance limit in our uh, in our ASME equation. And right here, here's the yield strength. But for us, we just use the shear yield strength. And you would also notice that there's only one factor right here. That's the KD. And for us, we have a loading factor. Um, applied to the moment and a loading factor applied to the torque okay so uh, the point here is that we'll we might have a different um, maybe a, a slightly off value of the uh, of the computed diameter 
Okay, so let's read the problem and um, we'll do some computations. Um, although we're not gonna delve into much of the details um, of the uh, of the statics, I mean of the equilibrium equations, just simply because we already uh, did a lot of that in the previous videos. All right. Now the problem says that the shaft shown in Figure twelve thirteen receives 110 HP from a water turbine through a change bracket at point C. So here's our step shaft. Let's just say for now, here's our shaft. And right here at C, here's the uh, the sprocket, right? And this is the input power. And at point A, this is, uh, this is a V-belt sheave. And this is an output output power so the, this one is output this one is input and another power transmission element here is a gear and this is also an output power right and these two right here are uh, are the bearing supports okay it says here that the gear pair at E delivers 80 HP to an electric generator um, and the V-belt sheave at A delivers 30 HP to a bucket elevator that carries grain to an elevated hopper. The shaft rotates at 1,700 RPM. The sprocket sheave and gear are located actually by retaining rings. And these retaining rings, they are uh, another, um, another type of shaft components um, that somehow they, they, they make the um, transmission elements uh, to to stay in place okay let's continue the sheave and gear are keyed with um, sled rudder key seats and there is a profile key seat at the sprocket use AI SI 1040 cauldron steel for the shaft and compute for the minimum acceptable, acceptable diameters D1 through D7 as defined in figure 1213 so right here uh, it labels D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. Okay, so let's convert this. Let's convert. Um, let's convert the the problem statement into a figure, into a three-dimensional figure. So here it is. Here's our shaft. Here's our sprocket, our sheave, and our uh, spur gears so the input power is coming from coming from this sprocket and it says in the problem that it has an input power of 110 HP okay so if this rotates clockwise then that means that the shaft rotates uh, also in clockwise and that means that the sheave and the gear also rotates in clockwise okay but this is the input this is output and it says that the um, that this V-belt sheave consumes a power of 30 HP and the spur gear consumes a power of 80 HP. Okay, so um, the angle right here, um, if here's our X, Y, and Z, uh, it says here that, the, that there's an angle of 60 degrees uh, from the from the z-axis okay so that's that's the orientation of the of the v pulley and in the sprocket uh, it makes an angle of 50 degrees downward okay so right here i just list down the material the yeah, si 1040 and the yield strength it says that it's um, 71,000 psi and of course since we are going to use our um, our our equation uh, from the lecture handouts then uh, we will need this information about the uh, shock loading and we'll just use a minor shock loading and also a safety factor of two okay so in terms of uh, side view you would notice that the spacing between each elements it's just six inches okay so uh, and lastly for the V V pulley sheave it has a pitch diameter of six six inches and 
for the sprocket it has a pitch diameter of 10 inches and for the spur gears uh, it has a pitch diameter of 12 inches okay so the first step um, the first step is to solve for the torque along the length because we need to actually the the method is uh, we need to find the torque and then after we find the torque we need to find the moment because once we have the torque and the moment and we know the the loading conditions then we can uh, directly apply the equation okay so that's why we need to solve first for the torque and then later uh, the moment okay so the torque will be coming from this equation p is equal to 2 pi nt so from this because the power is given so therefore i mean the power is given and the uh, and the shaft rpm is also given so therefore we can solve for the torque so the torque is equal to p all over 2 pi n okay so let's compute the torque at a so referring to the torque um, torque torque from this um, from this v shift right so the power is 30 hp and divided by 2 pi times the uh, rpm the shaft 1700 revolutions per minute and for the hp we need a conversion factor so that we can convert this this hp into foot pound per minute so if it is uh, in terms of foot pound per minute then we i mean the constant right here is 33000 okay and since we'll be using uh, in inch then we need to convert the feet into inches so we need to multiply 12 inch divided by one foot okay so if you do the um, computation what you'll get right here is a value of torque of 1112 pounds inch and we do the same at the uh, at the sprocket or at point C so since we have a, uh, a power right here of 110 then means that there's also a torque uh, at this point I mean we can obtain a torque at this point so it's just 110 HP times the conversion factors and also another conversion factor divided by the 2 pi n and we get a value of 4078 pound inch and again we do the same thing um, at E at point E so that's the point uh, at the spur gear so that's 80 HP divided by 2 pi n times the conversion factors and what we get is 2966 pound um, inch okay so now we have the value and we need to convert this uh, value into a, a diagram so in terms of torque diagram then let's just draw the length of the shaft then the points six uh, I mean point point a point B point C D E right so let's just say that um, a force or a torque that's rotating um, or I think it should be a a torque that's consuming power would be at, at the bottom of this line and a torque or let's say an input torque then that's going to be going upward right so again let's say input power that's upward and let's say uh, output power so that's downward Okay, so let's start at A. So at A, since this is a machine element that consumes power, so it has to go downward. So it has to go, uh, it has to go 1,112 pound inch because that's the computed torque, right? So from A, let's go to, I mean, let's go rightward. So there's since there's nothing, um, there's, n I mean, there's no changes in the torque. Well, I mean concentrated torques right here so it will just be constant okay so that's gonna be constant until it gets to point C so at point C since there's a concentrated torque but it's I mean this time it's an input power so it has to go upward 
and it, it has to go upward this much 4078 pound inch okay so pass this um, pass this point C then again there's nothing happening um, along the length with respect to the torque so it will just be constant until it gets to point E then point E since it's a uh, since it consumes power then it has to go downward by this much 2966 okay so that's the torque so now let's try to solve for the moment but before we can solve for the moment we need first to solve for the forces acting on the pulley sprockets and the gear and recall that in our lecture handouts that we have here in table 13-2 that for a spur gear uh, the forces are tangential force and radial force so that the, uh, these forces are acting at this um, pitch circle tangential force as I've said uh, it's a force that's just acting at the at the circumference and the radial force is a force that's directed towards the center Okay, so the equation for solving the tangential force is just simply um, coming from this uh, from this expression T. The torque is equal to force times the radius. So if we want to solve for the force, then this is simply torque divided by the radius. And the radius is just simply D all over uh, 2. Now to find the radial force, it just says here that the radial force is just equal to the tangential force times the pressure angle. So the pressure angle uh, actually depends on the type of uh, the type of gears, and usually it is given in the problem. All right, so right here it's twenty degrees, and for roller chains, um, you would also notice it's the same equation T divided by D all over two. And for the V-belts and flat belts, it's also the same for the net driving force, T all over D over 2. And um, if you recall in our, in our lecture about V-belts and flat belts, that uh, there is, I mean, one side is it's a tight side, for example, right here. So one side is a tight side and the other side is a slack side. So that's the reason why... Uh, there's a difference in the in the force value force magnitude okay so you can say f net f net is just simply the difference between the two and we project or we transpose the forces to this uh, I mean the forces to the to the center at the shaft okay and additional Equation regarding uh, regarding V-belts is the bending force in the shaft, which is simply uh, 1.5 times the net force. All right, so here's our diagram, and I've drawn this in YZ YZ plane. So here's our pulley; it's uh, six inches, and we have this angle of 60 degrees, and the F net, as I've said, is being trans. Uh, transposed to this um, I mean uh, assumed to act at this at this center shaft center right so if we have a force net going this direction then we can resolve this I mean by just uh, basic vector operation we can resolve this uh, this net force into a y into this component and the z component Okay, and for the sprocket, uh, we have here, um, here's the direction, and again, we can resolve that to uh, CZ and CY. By the way, this should be not the F net, but rather, this should be the V, the bending force. Okay, and for the gear, now for the gear, um, you would notice that the rotation is clockwise so that means that the force force um, from this gear should be downward however if this is our our uh, our 
body under under consideration then that means that this that means that this gear this external gear would be a support reaction with respect to this um, to this body so instead of having this this direction then uh, since we are I mean as I've said it's just it's a support reaction so the tangential force would be going going upward okay so that's the reason why I draw it like this okay so here's the tangential, tangential force and the uh, radial force okay so we apply the equations and then we solve for the components AZ uh, AY components and what else uh, also for the sprocket we do the same and for the gear okay so now once we solve all those forces then we we project those forces into this um, into this shaft assembly okay so it's a 3d uh, here's our X Y and Z here's point A for the pulley point B oh sorry point C for the sprocket and point E for the gears and right here we have uh, we have a bearing support at B and bearing support at B and D right so for the bearings we already learned the support reactions regarding the bearings the simplifications and our unknowns would be DZ I mean uh, the bearing reactions at D and the bearing reactions at B so we have four unknowns and our equations of equilibrium uh, in three dimensions we have we have six equations right so we have summation of forces x summation of forces y summation of forces z the summation of moment x summation of moment y and summation of moment z they're all equal to zero okay so once you apply this then you can obtain the value of the by bz dz and dy okay so if you've done that correctly then uh because we have the forces we have the support reactions then we can project our um our shear and moment diagram okay so since this is three dimensions then we will we'll get two diagrams for shear and two diagrams for the moment so if we project if we consider the forces along x and y then we will get this shear diagram and if we project this downward if you consider uh, x z then we'll get this diagram okay so if we translate this in two dimensions then we'll get this right so we'll get this this is the x y diagram or xy plane and this one is the yz plane right so here's our shear diagram and recall that this uh, that the shear diagram is the basis uh, for constructing the moment diagram so using the area method then you can find the value of the moment okay so right here we have um, 0 to 8 2892 4800 um, 2964 and so on and at yz plane we also get um, we get this value of the moments okay so since it seems that we have two moments then how do we choose or how do we select the moments so we can select that by To select the moment, um, solve for the moment. So at m is equal to a, or let's say m is equal to b, then we'll take the square root of this. This is 2892 squared, right? Plus the value at this point, this is plus 1668 squared. And what we'll get here is 3,399 pound inch. And for M, okay, we can also 
uh, obtain a value at C, right, and M at D. Okay, so, just do the same thing and then you'll get a value of 4,804 pound inch and this one is 3,155 pound inch. And for the torque, um, we already did that. So here we have at point A, here's the value of the torque. At B, here's the value of torque. At C, D, and E. So we can tabulate this. Um, I think it's better to tabulate this. So next step is, let's say, this is, this is 4. Or let's say this is 5. Uh, step 5. So step 6 is tabulate tabulate the data. Okay, so to tabulate the data, let's just write the label first. We have A, uh, we have B, C, D, and E. Okay, so right here, let's just write the maximum torque. So from the figure, at A is just 1,112. So, sorry, this should be here, right here. So this is 1,112. And at point B, it's the same, 1,112. And at point C, and at point C, um, the value that we'll be using is the 2,956. Right, 2,956. This is also 2,956. 2,956. So that's for the uh, maximum torque. And for the maximum moment, then we solved this already. Um, at A, this is 0. And take note, this is the maximum moment at the given section. And this one is 3,394, this one is 4,804, and this is 3,155 pound inch, and here is zero again. Okay, so uh, here's our value for the moment and the torques, and if we know the loading factor, the shock loading factor, um, and also the, safe, uh, the factor of safety, then we can solve for the diameter okay so as I have said that since the book has a uh, slightly different equations uh, I mean working equations to solve for the D then let's just uh, I mean just for discussion sake let's use our KM and our uh, loading factor um, this one since it's a minor shock loadings then this is this is 2.0 and this is 1.5 right so that applies to all here but the book has a I think it has different factors of the K um, I mean of the K value just simply because I think it's a stress concentration factor so for us here this is a loading factor a shock loading factor Okay, so once you have this, then you can solve for the minimum diameter using the equation. And in this type of applications, then I think it's better to use a, I mean, to program this in the computer so that you just have to input the values um, right here. So that you don't have to do uh, a lengthy computations. Okay, so right here, what we'll get is a value of 1.242 uh, that's in inches and here for B we have a value of 1.992 inches and this is 2.17 is 2.299 and this is 2.069 okay so this is the minimum diameter then that means that we can go 
uh, larger uh, of course go larger um, and round up to uh, to standard sizes okay so this one probably will use 1.25 inches right to 1.24 we can round that up to 1.25 and this one you can um, round by two inches and by the way um, our working equation uh, of T is equal to something like 16 pull over the shear yield strength, right? And the shear yield strength is 0 0.5 of the yield strength times the, this is uh, D raised to 3, times the square root of this Km times M squared plus Kt times T squared. Right, times the factor of safety of two. Right, so our factor of safety in this problem is two, so that's why we, we get this value. And this one is probably 2.25 inches, two and one fourth, and here is probably two and I mean 2.5 inches, and this one is 2.25 inches. So if we have this then we can now draw the shaft all right so if here's a b c d and e so it says that at a we'll need a 1.25 one and one one fourth and at b we'll be needing a um two inches right and at c we'll be needing 2.5 inches and here's the D will be needing a uh, larger uh, larger diameter and here is back to 2.25 okay so of course this is not true on the scale but the idea is that this is how we are going to construct it See here at D is 2.5, right? And at E um, is 2.25. Right, so back again here. Okay, and you just have to check if I mean you just have to check if uh, let's say if it's zero then we only need this this diameter uh, for the pulley right. and at B we need two inches so that means that right here we right here is the is the bearing then at point C uh, this is 2.25 for the sprocket right and what else uh, point D this is 2.5 so again another bearing and at point E here's our so here's our spur gear Okay, so of course uh, there's actually um, a, a radius right here, a fillet reg, uh, radius right right here for the shoulders and for positioning then probably we, we can, I don't know, maybe project this. So let's do some, let's do another, another design. So here's our pulley, right? So we can make a shoulder right here. Or maybe up to this point. Okay, 
Okay, so here's our buoy, and here's our bearing. And the difference now is that I have this sh shoulder at this um, at this edge, right? And here, here is my uh, sprocket, and here will be my my um, another bearing, and here's the, the spur here. Okay, so that's the design of the uh, of the of a step shop. Okay, so in the next video, we'll now continue our discussion regarding the um, uh, the shaft components. I mean, the shaft couplings. Okay, so see you in the next video.